and to talk to the people of Matungu. Madam Speaker, I take this opportunity first to congratulate you for having been elected the Deputy Speaker of the Tatin Parliament. And I also take this opportunity to congratulate my mentor and my friend, the Speaker Moses Wetangula, for having been elected the Speaker of this House. Madam Speaker, I have a history with the Speaker Wetangula because he is my mentor politically. When I left uh, my employment uh, in the Parliament, he is the first one who impressed me politically campaigned for me, gave me a ticket in his party, and actually uh, has mentored me up to this point in time. Madam Speaker, uh, second, I want to take this opportunity to thank, to sincerely thank the people of Matungu for overwhelmingly voting for me two times strongly in two years. First in 2021 and second in 2022. That is a vote of confidence by the people of Matungu uh, with me, and I embrace it. And I promise that I will work for the people of Matungu to make sure that I achieve what I promised them during the campaigns. Madam Speaker, let me take this opportunity. to say a few words about what the President said in this House, the 13th Parliament. This, the President first, I allow the President for acknowledging the fact that CDF is an important fund in the constituency's development. And he encouraged us and he told us that we can work out something to align that fund to the constitution so that it works for the member of parliament and it works for the constituents that actually are the direct beneficiaries of that fund. And by any means and by all means, everybody understands that CDF is an important fund to the development of the constituency. Millions and millions of children have been educated through CDF and a lot has been achieved through CDF. Unfortunately, it's only uh, the judiciary that doesn't understand the importance of that fund. But that's a, a matter for another day. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, other than that, I want to register my disappointment because the President did not give any commitment about the revival of the sugar industry in the western region and more so the revival of Mumias Sugar Company. I am a representative of the people of Matungu and the people of Matungu are 100% during those days the people of Matungu 100% dependent on Mumias Sugar Company. With the collapse of Mia Sugar Company, Mia Sugar Company collapsed with the dreams and aspirations of the people of Matungu and uh, Mumias at large. And it is very imperative that the government of the day has to give some importance to the revival of the sugar industry. Uh, it gives us sleepless nights. It actually saddens us when the government of the day decides to ignore the issue of Mumia Sugar Company. Uh, the issue of Mumia Sugar Company is a very thorny issue to us. The residents of Matungu are desperate. Mumia Sugar Company was only their livelihood. We depended on Mumia Sugar Company 100% to achieve all our dreams. But unfortunately, it collapsed. All efforts to revive Mumia Sugar Company over the years have failed. For whatever reason, everything that has been tried about Mia Sugar Company has failed. Right now, we have a, a, a businessman who is trying to revive the Mia Sugar Company, but we have numerous court cases 
going on to stop the revival of Mumia Sugar Company. It is time that the government has to intervene and make sure that Mumia Sugar Company actually stands on its feet for the benefit of the people of that region. Madam Speaker, the people of that region and the people of Matungu are tired of being told to move on from the sugar cane farming. We are not going to move on because sugar cane farming is the only business we know. We have tried everything else, it has failed. We have tried maize, we have tried sorghum, we have tried cassavas, we have tried uh, even avocados. But nothing is working for us, so we want our sugar cane back. And it's only the government that can help us. And so if the, if the government can't help us, then we shall remain hopeless because we are not going to move on. We are not going to do the other things. So people should stop telling us to move on because we are not going to move on. We are going to farm sugar cane and we want it to be revived. Madam Speaker, the issue of youth employment did not come out strongly in the President's speech. This country, 75% of the population of this country is, is youth. But where do we check them? There is no elaborate plan for youth employment in this country. There is no elaborate plan for people to rise up from the poverty. We hear of the hustler fund. If actually they are serious with the hustler fund, the government, then they should give a good percentage of that fund to the farmers of Matungu and Mumiasi at large so that they can replant the cane, so that they can supply that cane to Mia Sugar Company and other companies so that they can uh, revive the sugar cane farming uh, industry. Madam Speaker, this country, the economy, everybody agrees that the economy is in shambles. And uh, instead of the government also joining the one engine crying about the bad economy, it should give us an elaborate plan about what they are going to do to revive the economy in the shortest time possible. Madam Speaker, there is pl a plan that was was elaborated by the president that we should cut down costs. Instead of cutting down costs, the government should come up with a wealth creation method. We are not in the mood of cutting costs, we are in the mood of creating wealth. So the government should create wealth instead of cutting costs. Nobody is ready to, to surrender their allowances or whatever they, they have targeted just because we want to revive the economy. The first step is the government to give us an elaborate plan on how to revive this economy and on how, on how uh, most small enterprises are going to get a boost or a kickstart so that they can be empowered instead of waiting to be employed in a white collar economy. Madam Speaker, with those few remarks, I beg support. Thank you. Member for Busia. Thank you, Madam Deputy 